So um, welcome to Trivial Trivia Night. And we, um, we are doing a more general knowledge type of trivia. And um, the next trivia will be in May. And that's going to be Iconic America. Um, so welcome. I'm Jeanette from the Beakley, formerly from Newington. And with my cohort, Jennifer from Newington, the two J's. Oh, yeah. And um, just so you know that you guys are going to be playing for some awesome, mo not just library swag. Check this out. Made this on my on the new cricket at the library and it says for the winners trivia master Friday night trivia with Jeanette and Jen. So it's not perfect because <laughs> it was my first try and I did mess up a few of the um, vinyl sheets, but um, got something that's readable and pretty much acceptable. Um, so Jen, are we ready to start? So here are the rules. No yelling out answers. You can yell them out if you're muted, but if you're not, you know, people might be able to read your lips. So be careful. Brain power only, no devices, no iPads, no iPhones, no other computer screens. It's an honor system. You keep track of your score. So if you don't have a paper and pencil, you should get one now because you're going to keep track of your score. Um, spelling, and especially for Jen and I, pronunciation does not matter. We are awful. Well, I'm worse than Jen, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Our strengths <laughs> and our weaknesses. To have fun. We're here to have fun. And then to be eligible for a prize, you must submit your contact information in the link. So, and I also discovered tinyurl. So if you're having trouble either finding the link in the chat or, you know, obviously you don't want to write down or um, uh, type in that long, long URL, this tiny URL uh, will work just as well. It can get you to the right place to submit your contact information. Um, it's in the chat and I will submit it. I will send it out again in the chat once we're at the end. All right, with that being said, I think we're good. Jeanette, you good? Okay. I have the first category and it is Oh, I think you want you want do you want it or Oh, I thought you want Connecticut, right? Oh, I thought that was the first category. It's famous animals. Yes, it is. Oh, All right. I have famous animals. Everyone ready? Here we go. Question number one for two points. She became the first successfully cloned mammal. What was her name and what type of mammal was she? Just give me okay when you want it. Look, is there a question? No. Do we do we type in? Um we just we don't really have a type in form. So if you um just do it on pencil and paper or okay so we just write our answers on our own paper yeah yes. and then you keep then you take your own score yep Got it. okay again question one she became the first successfully cloned mammal what was her name and what type of mammal was she Everybody ready? Question two. For one point, name the horse that inspired a nation. Was the top money winner an inspiration for a book and a movie? Question two. Name the horse that inspired a nation. Was the top money winner? and the inspiration for a book and a movie. Okay, ready to move on? Oh my gosh. Question three for one point, arguably the most famous animal ever. This dog appeared in books, movies, and TV shows 
after appearing in a short story in 1859. What is her name? Again, question three, arguably the most famous animal ever. This dog appeared in books, movies, and TV shows after appearing in a short story in 1859. What is her name? Next question. Question four for one point. Name Dorothy's animal companion in The Wizard of Oz. Question four for one point. Name Dorothy's animal companion in The Wizard of Oz. Question five. For one point. Who was the first chimp in space? Question five, for one point, who was the first chimp in space? Okay, ready for the next one? Question six for two points. He's known for predicting winter's end. What is his name and what day does he make his prediction? Question six for two points. He's known for predicting winter's end. What is his name and what day does he make his prediction? Okay, question seven. For one point. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Laika? Famous Laika? Yeah, Laika. Okay. <laughs> what Jen said. Question <laughs> seven, one point. What was Laika famous for? Question eight. For one point, this gorilla captivated the world by learning how to communicate through sign language. What was her name? Again, question eight for one point. This gorilla captivated the world by learning how to communicate through sign language. What was her name? All set for question nine for one point. Shara Mee was awarded a medal for bravery in World War I. What kind of animal was she? Again, question nine for one point. Shara Mee was awarded a medal for bravery in World War I. What kind of animal was she? Okay, question 10 for one point. Name the Siberian Husky that saved Nome, Alaska from an outbreak of diphtheria. Again, question 10 for one point. Name the Siberian Husky, <clears throat> excuse me, that saved Nome, Alaska from an outbreak of diphtheria. Ready for the next part? Question 11, one point. This dog was a silent movie star who appeared in 27 action movies in the 20s and 30s. He even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What was his name? Again, question 11. Oh, Jen, there's somebody waiting. Got it.
Okay, you can um, come in and. Okay, yep, they are in. Okay, um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're in the first category on question 11. We'll try to get you caught up at the end. Oops, did they leave? Um, if you're still there, we'll try to get you caught up in between um, the categories. So question 11 for one point. This dog was a silent movie star who appeared in 27 action movies in the 20s and 30s. He even has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What was his name? Okay, question 12. <laughs> One point. What was the name of the orphaned lion raised by game warden George Adamson and his wife Joy? Books and a movie called Born Free were made about her life. Again, question 12. What was the name of the orphaned lion raised by game warden George Adamson and his wife Joy? Books and a movie called Born Free were made about her life. Okay, next question. Question 13 for three points. President Biden loves German shepherds. Can you name his three most recent dogs? Question 13. For three points. If you don't get all of them, write down the ones you do. You get one point for each correct answer. President Biden loves German Shepherds. Can you name his three most recent dogs? Okay, next question. Question 14 for one point. What is the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Question 14, one point. What is the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Okay, ready for that is that? Okay, so ready for the answers? Are you going to do the answers, Jen, or do you want me to? Up to you. What do you feel like? We can do both, set, both sides of the... So question one, Dolly, who was a sheep, was the first successfully cloned mammal. For one point. How many points was that? Just one point, Dolly. Oh, that's two, two. Right? two. 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 Sheep. Oh, yeah. Dolly and our sheep. <laughs> so if you got both answers, you got two points. Next one. Question two. Seabiscuit was the horse that was a top money maker and an inspiration for a book and a movie. That was one point. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. Lassie. Although, Jen, hmm? you know he was a boy. <laughs> really? Seriously? Yeah. Wait, you mean like the character versus the actual dog or like? The dog was a boy. Seriously? I'm sorry. He was a male, <laughs> but he played a girl on TV. But like, yeah, and the character was, uh, Lassie was supposed to be a female dog, but they cast a male dog is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 <So lassy. laughs> Question four. Dorothy's dog companion is Toto. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm I'm letting him in, but there we go. Okay. Question five. Who was the first chimp in space? Ham. Um, hi, ET. Um, we finished the first round, but if you want 
to stay with us. Um, we'll go over the questions really quick for you later, okay? Um, question six. Oh no, Poxitani Phil. And he comes, makes his appearance or his prediction, hopefully on Groundhog Day. If he said there was not gonna be six more weeks of winter this year, then he was totally wrong. <laughs> Okay, question seven. Uh, how many points was that, uh, Jenna? Two. Two. So one for the name and one for the day. Yeah. Can you just, um, you know, if you don't say anything, I'm assuming it's one point. But if you say something, can you make sure it's like two or three points? Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Question seven, who was the, Latka was the first dog in space. Question eight, Coco was the gorilla that um, learned how to communicate through sign languages. Question nine, I thought it was co-pigeon. I'm like, what? <laughs> Jeremy was a carrier pigeon who was awarded a medal for bravery in World War I. We will accept just pigeon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question 10. Balto was the Siberian Husky that saved Nome, Alaska. Mm -hmm. Question 11. Rin Tin Tin was the silent dog movie star who appeared in all those movies in the 20s and 30s. And he has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was a boy. <laughs> Question 12. <laughs> Elsa was um, the lioness in Born Free. And um, I read these books when I was like in junior high. I love them. There's three of them. Question 13. This is for three points. President Biden's German Shepherds, Champ. Major and Commander were his most recent dogs. R. Question 14. What was the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Pluto, of course. I think I should have known that. Bad. Bad. Okay, ready for the next category? All right, so the next category will be all about the state of Connecticut. And if we all live in Connecticut, we should do really well, you would think. We shall see. Yeah. All right, our first question, question one for one point. What Connecticut native and revolutionary patriot was famous <laughs> for his saying, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country? Question one for one point. What Connecticut native and revolutionary patriot was famous for his saying, I only regret that I have but one life to lose from my country? Can I admit him or did you admit him? I just thought, of, yeah. Okay, so do you want to leave that question up so they can start the cate category? Sure. All right, so we just started category number two. Uh, and so this is the first question, question one for one point. What Connecticut native and revolutionary patriot was famous for his saying, I only regret that I have but one life to lose from my country. Okay, moving on to question two for one point. What was the name of the first nuclear submarine? Uh, this is in this category because it was built in Connecticut. Question two for one point. What was the name of the first nuclear submarine? All right, moving on to question three for one point. What is the state insect of Connecticut? 
Question three for one point. What is the state insect of Connecticut? All right, moving on to question four for one point. What is Connecticut's state flower? Uh, question four for one point. What is Connecticut's state flower? All right, cool, cool. Moving on to question five for one point. Who were the first European people to explore Connecticut? Question five for one point. Who were the first European people to explore Connecticut? All right, and here we go to question six for one point. What famous playwright lived in New London in a house called Monkey Crystal Cottage? Question six for one point. What famous playwright lived in New London in a house called the Monkey Crystal Cottage? All right, moving on to question seven for one point. What Ivy League university is in Connecticut? What Ivy League university is in Connecticut? All right, moving on to question eight for one point. What is the name of Connecticut's official state song? Question eight for one point. What is Connecticut's official state song? Why does she keep looking over there? My dog. <laughs> Sorry. My dog's over here sneezing and like making little noises and stuff. So I'm just checking on her. <laughs> All right, moving on to question nine for one point. What famous American author of the American Dictionary was born in Hartford in 1758. Question nine for one point. What famous American author of the American Dictionary was born in Hartford in 1758? All right, question 10 for one point. What does the Mohican word for Connecticut mean? Question 10 for one point. What does the Mohegan word for Connecticut mean? All right, moving on to question 11 for one point. In what town in Connecticut uh, were the first friction matches made? Question 11 for one point. In what town were the first friction matches made? All right, question 12 for one point. What is Connecticut's nickname slash slogan? Question 12 for one point. What is Connecticut's nickname or slogan? You should see it a lot, especially <laughs> when you're out and about. All right, cool, cool. Moving on to question 13 for one point. What toy was developed by Yale students in 1920? Question 13 for one point. What toy was developed by Yale students in 1920? All right, moving on to question 14 for two points this time. Uh, what Connecticut town is home to the first soda bottling plant in New England? And for a second point, what is the soda brand's name? Question 14 for two points. What Connecticut town is home to the first soda bottling plant in New England? And for the second point, what is the soda's brand name? All right, cool, cool. Question 15, also for two points. What is the oldest continuously published newspaper in the country? That is obviously has something to do with Connecticut. And for extra point, for the second point, 
what year was this newspaper established? Question 15 for two points. What is the oldest continuously pub published newspaper in the country? And what year was it established? All right, so that might should total us up. All right, so total points for this round is 17. So let's see those answers. All right, so question one for one point. Nathan Hale was the Connecticut native and revolutionary patriot that was famous for his saying, I only regret that I have but one leg to lose for my country. Nathan Hale. All right, next one is question two. Question two for one point, the Nautilus. The Nautilus was the name of the first nuclear submarine built uh, in Connecticut and Groton, I believe. All right, moving on to question three for one point. The praying mantis is the state insect of Connecticut. The praying mantis. All right, moving on to question four. Uh, the mountain laurel is Connecticut state flower. The mountain laurel. All right, cool, cool. Moving on to question five. All right, the Dutch were the first European explorers to make it to Connecticut. The Dutch were the first European people to explore Connecticut for one point. All right, moving on to question six. I actually didn't know who this was, so thank you for making me look at it up. <laughs> Eugene O'Neill is a famous playwright who lived in New London in a house called the Monte Cristo Cottage. Eugene O'Neill. All right, moving on to question seven. Hope we all got this one, uh, but Yale University is the Ivy League University uh, based in Connecticut. Yale, Yale University for one point. All right, question eight. Uh, Yankee Doodle is Connecticut's official state song. Yankee Doodle for one point. Hmm. All right, moving on to question nine. Question nine for one point. Noah Webster was the famous American author of the American Dictionary that was born in Hartford in 1758. Noah Webster for one point. All right, moving on to question 10. Uh, Long River Place is the Mohegan uh, interpretation meaning of Connecticut. Long River Place for one point. All right, moving on to question 11. Uh, Beacon Falls is the town where the first friction matches were made. Beacon Falls for one point. Hmm. All right, question 12 for one point. Hope we all got this one because we see it every time we drive. It's on our license plates. The Constitution State is Connecticut's nickname slash slogan. Constitution State for one point. All right, question 13, the Frisbee for one point. The Frisbee was the toy developed by Yale students in 1920. The Frisbee for one point. All right, question 14 for two points. Uh, New Britain is the Connecticut town that is home to the first soda bottling plant in New England, New Britain. And then for the second point, Avery's is the soda's brand name, Avery's. So New Britain and Avery's, one point each for a total of two points. 
Well, cool. All right, moving on to question 15. Last but not least, the Hartford Current is the oldest continuously published newspaper in the country, in the entire country. The Hartford Current for one point, and for a little extra something bonus, for a second point, the, it was established in 1764. Uh, the Hartford Current was established in 1764 for a second point. One point each means two points total. All right. So that does it for me, which means I'm turning it back over to Jeanette for books. Okay. Are you ready for category three? Books. For one point, question one. The Da Vinci Code opens with a murder in which famous museum? Again, question one. For one point, the Da Vinci Code opens with a murder in which famous museum? Okay, question two for one point. What is the best-selling novel what is the the most, I don't know. What is the best-selling novel of all time? Not counting religious texts. Thank you, Jen, for adding that because. Everyone would have written a Bible, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not looking for the Bible. Question not the Bible. <laughs> for question two, for one point, um, what is the best-selling novel of all time? Okay. Ready for question three? For one point, what novel is set on a desert planet inhabited by giant sandworms? Again, that's question three for one point. What novel is set on a desert planet inhabited by giant sandworms? Okay, question four, also for one point. What dystopian novel by George Orwell told, the, told of life in a future totalitarian <laughs> state dominated by Big Brother? <laughs> question four, for one point. What dystopian novel by George Orwell Told of life in a future totalitarian state dominated by Big Brother. God, that was like two hard words in one question. You, you've got the two categories that have the most words in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question five. For one point, which Stephen King novel takes place mostly in the fictional Overlook Hotel? Question five, one point. Which Stephen King novel takes place mostly in the fictional Overlook Hotel? Okay. Question six, for one point. What is the name of Captain Ahab's ship in Moby Dick? Question six, one point. What is the name of Captain Ahab's ship in Moby Dick? Okay. Question seven for two points. In which town and state is the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee set? So if you just get the town, you get one point. If you get the town and the state, it's two points. In which town and state is the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee set. Okay, question eight. Again, two points. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights recounts the tragic romance between which two lovers? So if you only know one, you get one point. If you know them both, you get two. So question eight. Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights counts the tragic romance between which two lovers? Okay. 
Okay, question nine. For one point, who wrote Rip Van Winkle? Question nine for one point, who wrote Rip Van Winkle? Okay, question 10 for one point. Who wrote the books, The Martian Chronicles and Fahrenheit 451? Question 10, one point. Who wrote the books, The Martian Chronicles and Fahrenheit 451? Okay, question 11 for one point. What is the name of the author who wrote The Book Thief? Question 11, one point. What is the name of the author who wrote The Book Thief? Okay, question 12 for one point. In which state do Mark Twain's characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn live? Question 12, one point. In which state do Mark Twain's characters, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn live? Okay. Question 13 for one point. For one point. What poet wrote the following lines? Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. Question 13, for one point, what poet wrote the following line? Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. You'll get an extra point if you do the next line. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do, so don't worry. All right, all right, as long as you know, you can verify. <laughs> Um, question 14 for one point. Who is the only author to publish books in nine of the 10 Dewey Decimal categories? Hint, Jen with the hints. I, 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 I don't know what this is. He's a, he's a famous science fiction writer. So Thank you, help, okay? <laughs> one point. Who is the only author to publish books in nine out of the 10 Dewey Decimal categories? And there's a hint, he's a famous science fiction writer. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think that's a little hard. I wanted to help just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, okay, so question 15 for one point. Which detective series focuses on two brothers, Frank and Joe, who solve mysteries? Question 15, one point. Which detective series focuses on two brothers, Frank and Joe, who solve mysteries? There is also a TV show. Uh, okay, <laughs> is everyone ready? Do you have your answers? You're ready for the uh, answers? So this category, you can score a total point of 18 since I uh, threw in a last <laughs> minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Question one, the Louvre was the um, famous museum where murder takes place in the Da Vinci Code to open the book. Okay. Question two. Don Quixote with over 500 million copies sold. Not counting religious texts. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. Dune is the desert planet inhabited by giant sandworms. Gross. Question four. 1984 was the novel written by George or Orwell about the state dominated by Big Brother. Question five. The Shining was the Stephen King novel that took place in the fictional Overlook Hotel. That's one point. 
Question six. The Pequod was the name of Captain Ahab's ship in Moby Dick. One point. Question seven. And this was for two points. Maycomb, Georgia was the town where To Kill a Mockingbird was set. Question eight. For two points, Catherine and Heathcliff were the two lovers in the tragic romance, Wuthering Heights. Question nine. Washington Irving wrote Rip Van Winkle. Question 10. Ray Bradbury has Question eight, one point. Oh, I don't know, Jen, do you have the? Nope. I'll go back. Uh, so it's two points. Two. So one for each name. Yeah, one for each name. Okay. Where should we leave off? <laughs> Ray Bradbury wrote books in all of the Dewey numbers, or nine of the 10 Dewey numbers, or sections. No, wait. Oh wait! Right. No, <laughs> you're not, you're not. you said with such confidence too. I know. <laughs> Look at this. Well, anyway, it was Ray Bradbury who wrote the books *The Martian Chronicles* and *Fahrenheit 451*. Mm -hmm. um, wrong science fiction writer. Sorry. <laughs> Marcus Zusak was the author of the book *The*. Um, and I have to tell you, I loved that book and I was at a, a conference and I chased him around the conference to get him to sign my book. <laughs> <laughs> I was stalking him. Um, question 12. Missouri is the state where Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn live, lived. 13. Robert Frost, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference, is the line after that. Oh, so, okay. Frost, that has made all the difference. Question 14. Isaac Asimov is the one who has books in nine out of the 10 Dewey Decimal categories. Right. Jump, jumped ahead a little bit before that. Um, okay, and our last <laughs> question for this category. I think people need help with that one, all right? <laughs> all right. The Hardy Boys, Frank and Joe Hardy, solved mysteries in that detective series. Okay, I'm handing it over to Jen. Yay, all right. So we're going to have fun with fun and games, category four. All right, question one for one point. Which chess piece is of the lowest relative value? Question one for one point. Which chess piece is of the lowest relative value? All right, question two for one point. What is the diameter of a basketball hoop in inches? Question two for one point. What is the diameter of a basketball hoop in inches? All right, question three for one point. What do you call it when, you, when a bowler makes three strikes in a row? Question three for one point. What do you call it when a bowler makes three strikes in a row? All right, question four for three points this time, a big one. The Triple Crown Award is given to a horse that wins which three races? Each race is worth one point. So let's see how many races you can name for the Triple Crown Award races. Uh, three points. Moving on to question five, for one point, 
In what country did cricket originate? Question five for one point. In which in what country did cricket originate? All right, moving on to question six for one point. Who was the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters? Question six for one point. Who was the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters? All right, moving on to question seven for one point. Speaking of trivia, how many wedges do you need to collect in Trivial Pursuit to win? Question seven for one point. How many wedges do you need to collect in Trivial Pursuit to win? All right, question eight for one point. Uh, sports question. Uh, which team has the record of scoring the most points in a single Super Bowl? Question eight for one point. Which team has the record of scoring the most points in a single Super Bowl? I did, I did not know this one. <laughs> All right, moving on to question nine for one point. How much is the letter X worth in Scrabble? Question nine for one point. How much is the letter X worth in Scrabble? All right, question 10 for one point. What sporting event is held every year on Memorial Day? Question 10 for one point. What sporting event is held every year on Memorial Day? All right, question 11 for one point. In which fun game might you try to remove a rubber band from a leg with tweezers? Question 11 for one point. In which fun game might you try to remove a rubber band from a leg with tweezers? All right, question 12 for one point. What is the only point combination in the hand that a player cannot get in cribbage. Question 12 for one point. What is the only point combination in a hand that a player cannot get in cribbage? I had no idea what this was referring to, I'm sorry. All right, moving on to question 13 for two points. In what year were women allowed to compete in modern Olympic games? And for a second point, and what sport? Question 13 for two points. Okay. Uh, in what year were women allowed to complete to compete in modern Olympic games? And for a second point, what sport? All right, moving on to question 14 for one point. How many players do you need to play bridge? Question 14 for one point. How many players do you need to play bridge? All right, cool, cool. Moving on to question 15 for one point. Who was the first president to throw the ceremonial first pitch at a major league baseball game? Question 15 for one point. Who was the first president to throw the ceremonial first pitch at a major league baseball game? All right, and that should finish, finish us off for this category. Total points is 18. Let's see how we did. Question one, the pawn is the chess piece of the lowest relative value. For one point, the pawn. All right, question two, uh, the diameter of a basketball hoop is 18 inches. 18 inches for one point. Question 13, a turkey. Uh, when you bowl, uh, when you make three strikes in a row when bowling, it's called a turkey. For one point. All right, cool. Moving on to question four, our big one. So we got three points here. 
The Triple Crown Award is given to the horse that wins these three races. How many did you get? Uh, for one point, mm -hmm. Kentucky Derby. Uh, another point is Belmont Stakes. And for a third point is the Preakness Stakes. I will mm -hmm. accept Kentucky Derby, Belmont, and Preakness. Yep. Oh, cool. For three points. Big deal. I only got cool. All right, cool. Moving on to question five for one point. England. England is the country that cricket originated. England for one point. All right, question six. Tiger Woods still remains the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters. Tiger Woods for one point. All right, moving on to question seven. Uh, you need to collect six wedges in Trivial Pursuit to win. Six wedges for one point. All right, moving on to question eight. For one point, the San Francisco 49ers is the team that has the record of scoring the most points in a single Super Bowl. The San Francisco 49ers for one point. Question nine, uh, for one point, eight points. <laughs> uh, the letter X is worth eight points in Scrabble. Eight points for one point. All right, question 10 for one point. The Indianapolis 500 race is the sporting event that is held every year on Memorial Day. The Indianapolis 500 for one point. All right, question 11. So operation, operation is the fun game where you might try to remove a, rem a rubber band from a leg with tweezers. Operation for one point. All right, question 12. Uh, 19 for one point. Uh, 19 is the only point combination in a hand that a player cannot get in cribbage. Don't ask me why. Uh, 19 for one point. All right, question 13. So we got two points here. Uh, 1900 was the year where women were finally allowed to compete in the modern Olympic Games, the year 1900, and they were allowed to do so in tennis. So 19, one point for 1900 and a second point for tennis. <laughs> All right, moving on to question 14 for one point, and we're looking for four players or two pairs, however you want to say it, but uh, going to have four players you, that you need to play to have to play bridge. Four or two pairs for one point. All right, and last but not least, the question 15. Uh, that would be William Howard Taft uh, was the first president to throw the first ceremonial first pitch at a major league baseball game. William Howard Taft for one point. All right, and that finishes us off for fun and games. And let's go on to category five, totally random. Go ahead, Janet. Okay. Let's start. Question one. For one point, what is the capital of Canada? For one point, question one, what is the capital of Canada? Question two, for one point, what is the longest river on earth, not counting any estuaries that feed into the river? So what is the longest river on earth, not counting any estuaries? And that's for one point. Question three. What are cirrus and cumulus examples of? What are cirrus or cumulus examples of? And that's one point. Question four for one point. 
Name the capital of Australia. Can you get that question? No, we have the capital of Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. I, 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 <laughs> I looked through the PowerPoint so many times. I'm like, oh shoot. Okay. Go. okay. <laughs> question for one point. Name the capital of Australia. Question five. One point. In which country is Transylvania? In which country is Transylvania? For one point. Okay, question six. For one point. In Montgomery, Alabama, on December on a December day in 1955, who refused to give up their seat on a bus? So that's question six. One point. In Montgomery, Alabama, on, on a December day in 1955, who refused to give up their seat on a bus? Question seven. One point. America is supposedly named after which explorer? Question seven, one point. America is supposedly named after which explorer? Question eight, for one point. Where would you be if you were standing on the Spanish steps? Question eight, for one point. Where would you be if you were standing on the Spanish steps? Are you looking for a city? Yes. So that would be the city, not the country. Question nine. For one point, what year was the United Nations established? Question nine, one point. What year was the United Nations established? Question 10. One point. What country drinks the most coffee per capita? Per, well, what country <laughs> drinks the most coffee per capita? Meaning per person. person. It means per person. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> All right, just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Question 11. For one point, who famously crossed the, Alp, the Alps with elephants on the way to war with the Romans? So that's question 11. For one point, who famously crossed the Alps with elephants on the way to war with the Romans? Question 12, for one point, what is the world's fastest bird? Question 12, for one point, what is the world's fastest bird? Question 13, for one point, what is a group of crows called? Question 13 for one point, what is a group of crows called? Question 14 for one point, how many hearts does an octopus have? Question 14 for one point, how many hearts does an octopus have? Question 15, for one point, where is the strongest human muscle located? Question 15, for one point, where is the strongest human muscle located? And I think that's the end of this 
Sorry. And so it's a total of 15 points. Ready for the answers? Ottawa is the capital of Canada, and that was for one point. Ottawa. Question two for one point. The Nile River is the longest river on earth. The Nile. Question three for one point. Cloud. <laughs> and cumulus are examples of cloud, different cloud formations. Question four for one point. Canberra is the capital of Australia. Canberra. I had to look that up because <laughs> I thought it was not that. Let's just say that. It's kind of like when you're finding questions and finding the answer, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not having to take the test. It's kind of hard. <laughs> you have to take it. Um, question five. Romania is the country where Transylvania is located. Romania for one point. Question six. Rosa Parks was the woman who refused to give up her seat on the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Rosa Parks, for one point. Question seven. Amerigo Vespucci was the is supposed, <coughs> America is supposedly named after him. Amerigo Vespucci. Mm -hmm. Question seven for one point. Question eight, Rome is where you would be if you were standing on the Spanish steps, Rome in Italy, but we were looking for the city. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one point. I wasn't sure what you were looking for, so. <laughs> Question nine. Yeah, like not Rome, Georgia. Isn't there a Rome, Georgia or something? <laughs> Question nine, 1945 was the year that the United Nations was established, 1945, for one point. Question 10, Finland, the average Finn drinks four cups a day with legally mandated 10 minute coffee breaks twice a day. Well, I saw the answer and I'm like, no way that's right. So I went to go check it. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, my God. And yeah, that's a real statistic. They have legally mandated coffee breaks. Because it's such a. <laughs> so Finland is where they drink more cups of coffee per day than anywhere else. Person per day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Question 11. Hannibal, the Carthinian. <laughs> Thanks, Jen, for the little description. Hannibal was the um, guy that took his elephants over the Alps on his way to war with the Romans. Not, not Hannibal Lecter, that guy. The other guy. <laughs> Is that why there is more? <laughs> Please clarify which one we're talking about here. <laughs> yes, because it would it would be so easy to confuse them. <laughs> Question eleven. That was for one point. Sorry. Oh, Peregrine falcon is the world's fastest bird. Peregrine falcon. Question 12 for one point. Okay. Question 13. A of crows is called a murder. Yeah. It's so appropriate to be question 13. <laughs> question 13. So it's a murder of crows. Question 14. Three, an octopus has three hearts. And I, and I don't know even how many brains, it was like kind of under, uh, there was different answers for the, for the brain thing, Interesting. like up to 16 or something. Um, so question 14, an octopus has three hearts. Question 15, your jaw is the strongest, it, the strongest muscle is located in your jaw. 
So it's the jaw for one point. At least we didn't ask for the name of the muscle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're going to get specific. Yep, we get that. Um, so um, that concludes all of our regular categories. We do have a bonus category if people want to stick around for that. But these are the ones. Um, there's a maximum total of 85 points. So add up your points and put them in the chat with your contact information. Or so um, we would or prefer no, the link. I'm sorry, right? Yeah, we would really prefer if you would I just put it in the chat again. If you can go to um, either one of these links, I'll take you to the same spot and you can put your contact information there, such as like where you can pick up your prize, how many people were in your group. And um, there's a couple of two questions at the end about, you know, how what kind of topics you like and how do you feel about being virtual versus in person? You know, just to get a feel. It's not required, but if you have a strong opinion, feel free to throw it in there. Um, yeah. So otherwise, um, like Jeanette said, this is the end of the uh points uh trivia game. And then we have a little bonus round if you want to stick around and play with us. Any questions we have to go back to? Any questions that maybe you need clarification on? Can I just, I'm sorry, can I just uh, email you my uh, points? Because I'm... Sure, okay. Yeah, that's I fine, mean, Phyllis. I see the chat down here, but I'm kind of like embarrassed. Plus, you know, I'm not from here, so I, I got I got some really, you know, bad points. So, but you know, it's okay. Uh, can I just yeah, email if, you? If the link doesn't work, or if it's not working for you, and yes, you can do it in the chat. Yes, yeah. I will write it down and submit it for you. Okay. Because really, it kind of puts everything nice and neat. And okay, thank you. I love myself a Google Doc. Okay. Sure to tell us which library that you would you would pick it up where you would pick it up also okay but we know phyllis that you're in newington actually i live in west hartford but i'm not too far from the library so your library okay all right so i think that i have some of the prizes um we're going to put together the prizes probably monday for for at the earliest tuesday pickup so you will be notified and then on Tuesday, you'll be able to pick up your prizes. Oh, how I do this. Oh, hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. I don't know how to do this. All right. right. Okay. You ready for bonus? bonus? Let's do bonus. Let's do bonus. All right. Bonus round. So, no points. It doesn't add to the total score. It's just more quizzing. Just, just for fun. Just for fun. All right, take it. Let me sure did who, who did it last? Who did the last category? I just did the last one, but that's okay. okay yes, oh my God, I'm losing it. All right, it's late. <laughs> um, <laughs> question one. Uh, so Connecticut boasts the oldest continuously operating amusement park in North America. Uh, what is its name and where is it located? Uh, so question one, Connecticut boasts the oldest continuously operating amusement park in North America. What, what is its name and where is it located? So kind of look well, at two answers here. Yeah, two fake points. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me just make sure that nothing's going on in the chat that I need to worry about. Nope, looks good. All right. I'm going to do this, Jen, while, and you can look at the chat. No, because I can write down the chat later. I just okay. want to make sure there's no questions regarding what I'm doing right now. All right, question two. Uh, which president owned a Scottish carrier named Paula? Question two. Which president owned a Scottish carrier named Paula? Question three. All right, how many squares are there on a Scrabble board? Question three. How many squares are there on a Scrabble board? All right, question four. Uh, which famous American author was a descendant of one of the judges of the Salem witch trials? Question four. 
Uh, which famous American author was a descendant of one of the judges of the Salem witch trials? If you've ever been to Salem, you've probably been to the house. All right, moving on to question five. Uh, who wrote the children's book, Where the Wild Things Are? Question five. Who wrote the children's book, Where the Wild Things Are? All right, let's make sure. Okay, cool. All right, moving on to question six. Uh, who was the first man to step on the moon? Uh, question six. Who was the first man to step on the moon? Question seven. Speaking of the moon, uh, what was the name of the Greek goddess associated with the moon? Question seven. What was the name of the Greek goddess associated with the moon? Question eight. Uh, what is the name of the children's series that had the reader be the one to decide the outcome of the books? Question eight. What is the name of the children's series that had the reader be the one to decide the outcome of the books? All right, moving on to question nine. Uh, what country has the most islands? Question nine. What country has the most islands? Question 10. What is the only continent with land in all four hemispheres? Question 10. What is the only continent with land in all four hemispheres? All right. And we just had 10. Oh, wait. Nope. We have an extra. Oh, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeanette. Okay. So, what company in Connecticut? What is the name of the company in Connecticut? Or the name of. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Keep going. Come on. You got it. This company is in, located in Connecticut that um, manufactures. Um, dispensers mm -hmm. with candy in them. Okay. Can you repeat that? that? I mean, it was better when I practiced it before we. So, um, is it located in Connecticut mm -hmm. and it manufactures pretty popular um, candy dispensers? That. What is the name? Yeah, what is the what name? is the name? What is the name? <laughs> Do you want to do the answer now or at the end? Okay, I'll give you a hint. This is a visual hint. Are you going to show the test? <laughs> push, it, push it down a little bit. There you go. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. This is like a very special limited edition one that's re really old. So but <laughs> people do collect them. They're not usually so. That was not a thinking question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's finish up. All right, question one. Uh, so Lake Compounds is the uh, oldest continuously operating amusement park in North America. And it is located in Bristol slash Southern King. If you look up the Wikipedia page, it has them in both. So either or, or both, Bristol slash Southern King. Still, so we'll go with <laughs> either one though. Either one. I mean, I don't know. All right, cool. Moving on to question two. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt was a president who owned a Scottish carrier named Paula. Franklin D. Roosevelt. All right, question three. There are 225 squares on a scrabble board. 225. All right, cool, cool. Moving on, question four. Uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne was a famous American author who was a descendant of the a descendant of a judge during the Salem witch trials. If you've been to Salem, you've probably been to his house, the Nathaniel Hawthorne House of Seven Gables. 
All right, moving on to question five. Yep. Uh, Maury Sendak, who wrote, uh, he is the one who wrote the children's books, Where the Wild Things Are, Maurice Sendak. Cool, cool. Question six. Uh, Neil Armstrong, first man to step on the moon. Neil Armstrong. All right, question seven. Speaking of the moon, Artemis is the Greek goddess associated with the moon. Artemis. All right, question eight. Uh, the name of the series where the reader got to choose the outcome and choose the path of the how the book went was called Choose Your Own Adventure. How accurate, choose your own adventure. Question nine, uh, I, again, when I saw this, I had to look it up to make sure and- You don't see. trust me, Jen? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just like to double check. Um, so Sweden <laughs> is the country with the most islands with, oh my gosh, 267,570 islands. Sweden has that many islands, the most islands in the world. Cool, cool. And last for the sanction questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So Africa is the That's only continent with land in all four hemispheres. Africa. All right, Jeanette, go. <laughs> it's, can you see it? It's uh, Pez. Push it down Pez dispensers are manufactured in Connecticut. So and guess what one of your prizes will be for the winners? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So again, even with the bonus round, um, the total number of points is 85. Um, either enter into that link, give us your information, or you can put it in the chat and I will enter it in for you. Uh, that being said, um, this is our trivia for next time. Uh, join us again for Iconic America Trivia Night, um, where we're going to kick off the summer uh, with some classic Americana trivia. It will be again on Friday, always on Friday at 7 p.m. on May 26th. We'll talk about national park, presidents, some history. Uh, you know, the questions will all be America. So that'd be cool, hopefully. All right. Anything else you want to add, Jeanette? No, yeah, thanks for coming tonight. We hope you had a good time. We always do. <laughs> right, Jen? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and hope to see you next time. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Bye. Good night. Thank you.